Hi, my name is Brennan Hall, and this is a video of a warm-up you should do prior to playing golf. Warm-up is important to increase your heart rate and blood flow, as well as prepare the muscles you need for golf. It's going to take 5 to 10 minutes of your time and be fairly quick. Not warming up before golf increases your risk of injuring your body while playing. A warm-up is important because it decreases your risk of injury as well as improves your performance while golfing. One study found that the golf warm-up increased club head speed by over 10% immediately and performed consistently for five weeks, increased club head speed by over 24%. I took the same golf warm-up that we'll be doing today, and a guy improved his club head speed by nine miles per hour immediately. So the first thing we're gonna do is what I call a lunge with the rotation. It's really intended to get your heart rate going and your blood pumping. You want to do 10 to 15 of these exercises, make sure you breathe, keep your back flat and your head up while you're performing these. I'm going to put the golf club behind my head, but this isn't necessary. So the first thing we're going to do is lunge forward, step forward and lower this knee down through the ground and rotate toward that knee, return. We're going to do 10 of these. So notice I'm keeping my head up. And my back's flat, and I'm breathing throughout the exercise. It's important to do these at a consistent speed so you really get your heart rate going. And when I say 10, I mean 10 with each leg. Alright, so that's 5. I'm now going to do 5 from the side. Notice my back knee is not coming to rest on the ground. It's lowering close to the ground, but I'm not sitting on the ground while I perform this. Two more. too hard for you, if they cause any pain, another great way to warm up beforehand is to take a five or six minute walk or climb some stairs or if you have the option to stop by a local gym, maybe ride a stationary bicycle for five minutes. The first exercise you should do is just really get your heart rate going. This next warm up we're going to do is I call it reach up and reach back. This prepares the back and the shoulders for the golf swing. To get a full back swing, you need a lot of motion at this shoulder, and then for your follow through, the same at this shoulder. You want to do roughly 10 or 15 of these beforehand, and focus on breathing and squeezing your shoulder blades together. Start by holding your golf club out in front of you, reach up toward the sky or the ceiling, and pull down into your chest. You want to squeeze your shoulder blades together as you pull back toward your chest. If this is easy and you don't feel a gentle pull in the front of your shoulder, you can then pull the club gently behind your head. This increases the motion at the shoulder. Still focus on squeezing your shoulder blades together. From the side of you, First started by pulling into my chest, I'll do three of these, and if that's too easy, you can pull it behind your head. And I'm not sure if you can notice, but my shoulder blades are squeezing together here, as well as here. This next warm up I call leg swings. You're going to warm up the hips here, as well as the legs, which are important for power and balance during the golf swing. You can use your golf club or something stable to hold on to. And first we're going to do 10 going forward to backwards. So I hold on to my stable object, and with my leg close to straight, swing legs forward and backwards in a controlled manner. Focus on stability on the standing hip and your balance. And the right hip, focus on mobility and power. I'll show you these from a side view. Stand
standing on my left leg, swing my right leg forward to backwards, straight. You want to do this with both legs 10 times. After that, you want to swing your hips from side to side. So here I'm still working on my left leg for balance and my right leg for movement. Go out to the side and in. Notice I'm not bending my upper body. I'm trying to stand straight up. It's four, five, Remember to keep breathing. This next exercise is called windmills. This is similar to the golf swing for the low back because it requires it to stay flat while also rotating. Since the back is the most common area injured while golfing, you want to perform this motion very controlled and very safe. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to perform five of them with you toward each foot. But while warming up, I want you to perform ten. So you start with your shoulders, your feet apart, and your arms out to the side. Remember to keep your back flat, and one way to do this is by keeping your head up while reaching toward each toe. You want to keep your stomach flat and help strengthen your core muscles. These include your abs, your obliques, and the muscles of your low back. So again, one more in a slow motion. By keeping my head up, it allows me to keep my back flat. And let me show you this from the side. So even if I can't reach down toward my toes, keeping my back flat is going to protect my back. This warm-up movement is called separation swings. It allows to separate your lower body and your upper body during the golf swing. You'll need your golf club, and it's similar to a normal golf swing, but just imagine opening up your lower body early. So during your back swing, you're going to step forward and open up at the hips. You may not reach your full back swing, which is fine, and it may feel a little weird the first couple times you do this. So you're going to perform five or ten of these before going to your normal air swings. So as I go into my back swing, I'm opening up my lower body and then following through. Let's perform five of these. As I go into my back swing, I'm opening up. So my low body is rotating this way while my upper body is rotating this way. You notice I'm not concerned with reaching my maximal back swing, but I still follow through normally. During the back swing, open up, follow through. Good. After the separation swings, you should take five or ten normal air swings. Before warming up at the range or then finishing up with your normal routine. Going to the range, I recommend starting with the lower iron and progressing your speeds and also progressing to a driver, which golfers tend to hit much harder. And finally, static stretching. That's another great way to decrease your risk of injury, and I recommend doing it after golfing and anytime you finish exercise. It's a great way to increase your flexibility in the long term, decrease your risk of injury, so you can stay on the golf course longer. Thank you.